Directed by John Carpenter and written by Bill Lancaster, The Thing aged like fine wine, set in a place as desolate as the Antarctic and built on the pillars of paranoia, claustrophobia and ambiguity. The film is now hailed as one of the best horror movies ever made. However, there exist stark and sharp differences between what Lancaster wrote and what Carpenter finally released. Not only did the film have an alternate ending confirming who the thing was in the end, but there also exist several pieces of footage and production images. Additionally, the DVD and TV versions also give us extra footage, but they do not tell us what was deleted, right? So in this video, we will explain the five scenes that were deleted from the final cut of this 1982 masterpiece. So turn off those lights and get ready. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. I mean it. Pretty strange companion. The Thing is celebrated today for the strange and claustrophobic environment it was filmed in. The bleak, chilly and uninhabitable topography makes it only worse for the crew of Outpost 31. Of course, it was an all-male crew and it wouldn't come as a surprise if sometimes a few men missed the soft and warm touch of a woman. To help with this issue of loneliness and to serve as a streak of dark humour in an otherwise bleak story, RJ McCready was supposed to have himself a blow-up doll, the size of a grown woman and with fully developed assets. Bill Lancaster originally wrote the script and he intended the blow-up doll to serve as McCready's very unlikely companion at all times. After returning from the Norwegian campsite, he was supposed to blow his friend absent-mindedly, I mean blow up his friendly doll. Of course, according to the original script, a bleary-eyed McCready returns from the Norwegian camp and starts watching the videotapes that he brought back. All the while, he was to inflate a strange object that initially looked like a balloon. It finally blossoms into an adult woman's life-size model. But suddenly, something on the video catches his attention and McCready rewinds it before getting back to inflating the doll. If we think about it, McCready's actions were not motivated by anything unusual and he was inflating the doll while watching the video, much like someone eats popcorn while watching a movie. So, I believe McCready was pretty used to using his doll for something hedonistic. The doll would have served as an effective prop to help the audience understand where all the women were in Outpost 31. Well, there weren't any. However, Mr. Carpenter decided that there was no need for the doll, probably because it would have served as more of a distraction for the story instead of a helping hand. Shortened scene of the Norwegian campsite after the Norwegians create a ruckus at Outpost 31 by firing and blowing up their own chopper, a team from Outpost 31 leaves for the Norwegian site to check what happened. What they find inside shocks them in their bones and Doc can be heard saying, my god, what the hell happened here? The charred remains of something that was once living and the devastated campsite proved a bit too much for our friends. However, this scene was shortened by about 15 seconds. The full footage was, however, shown in the TV version, released much later. One could see extra footage and more weird corpses. Jennings' <laughs> neck impalement the thing was filled with chilling and gory scenes. From the dog thing to the creepy spider head moving about, Carpenter's film was little less than an alien hell. Among these, one of the most gruesome scenes was the infection and semi-assimilation of Bennings. Windows leaves him in a room with a thing corpse that was not dead yet. And that's when Bennings gets attacked. Windows comes back to witness the horrific moment and he rushes back outside to alert McCready. Bennings later runs out into the ice and trips. The thing had not completely assimilated with Bennings and we can see the gnarly and unearthly hands. Bennings' thing realizes that he's done for the day and lets out a bone-chillingly evil roar before he's burned down by the men. However, this chilling scene did not find its way into the shooting script. In the original script, Bennings was to follow strange noises coming from the dog kennel. Oh boy, don't even get me started on the whole dog thing. Speaking of which, you should check out our other videos on the thing, including the origin story. Moving on, in the dog kennel, he's attacked and stabbed in the neck by someone unseen. 
In one of the deleted videos, we can see that Bennings is moving extremely slowly and cautiously toward the kennel, but the footage of the stabbing is lost. However, there are pictures that still exist which suggest that he was stabbed in the neck. Carpenters was not a slasher movie and he did not want to make it another Halloween, another one of Carpenters' greatest. So the stabbing scene was reshot into something that was way more effective. You gotta be fucking kidding. Fuse death. There have been several movies with extremely imaginative death sequences. If you think about it, Michael Myers himself has been quite imaginative and he was the brainchild of John Carpenter. But the thing is a milestone in itself as far as unique and imaginative death sequences are concerned. However, out of the 12 characters, many die off screen. For instance, the character of Fuchs dies a horrid death, but he seems to be camera shy. He rushes out into the open with a flare after seeing someone pass by his room. Later, we find his body charred like a kebab. It is deduced that instead of allowing the thing to assimilate with him, Fuchs chose to simply burn himself. However, according to the script written by Mr. Lancaster, his death would have greeted him a little differently. Despite being another off-screen death, Childs and Palmer were to find the corpse of Fuchs pinned on one of the doors with an axe. It reminds me of so many pinned victims in all those slasher films. Anyway, the sequence was shot, but then that was cut out. However, Joel Polis, who plays Fuchs, can be seen in production pictures with a shovel that's sticking out of his poor chest. The original film confirmed that the thing lived, and more Outpost 31 footage. With Outpost 31 desecrated and burned, we find Childs and McCready together, but alone, and sharing a bottle of J&B whiskey while waiting for rescue or more likely death by freezing. And since that moment on, Carpenter has chosen not to disclose who among them was the infected party. There have been comics that disclose this little piece of information, but not the movie. However, one of the deleted scenes shows one husky running out into the open. The scene is from the following morning and Outpost 31 can be seen emitting smoke from the previous night's events. The scene then cuts to the husky. The scene then cuts to the husky, who runs into the ice before stopping for a moment to look back at the devastation. Probably the husky thing wanted to ensure that no one followed it, or maybe it was the husky thing's idea of breaking the fourth wall, you know, when characters from movies speak to the audience. Nevertheless, John Carpenter probably thought that it was a good idea to remove this scene because it confirmed that the thing lived on. It created the much-needed confusion and ambiguity that the film needed. And it is this ambiguity that works as a major contributing factor to the thing's success as a film. Throughout history, films have had several alternate endings and deleted scenes. While some of these alternate endings work in favor of a movie, others do not. I would be thrilled to know if you personally know about any such alternate endings. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.